Um, whenever you want a new product, food, beverage, the, product, the form have to be submitted to Nashville and it's sent via, via printer. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Uh, if you go to Attico, you cannot find the product. Okay, you go here to this property on the top menu and products. You have access to products and vendors. So you can see every single vendor that we have in the database. Okay, and products assigned to that vendor. But if you go here to products and where it says product name, and you can search for a product, you know, let's say every product that we create has a naming convention, meaning that it's, it starts with vegetables or fruit or condiments, spice, so it groups together. If you try to find a particular lettuce that is not in the system, I mean, you can search, there's a lot of them here, but then when you click on this section, you can narrow down the search and says, I'm looking for something that is arugula. As you start typing, it narrows down the search, okay? You see that it's not there, we don't have it. We have to create an article, okay? So the next step is to open your Lowe's intranet. You're gonna go to department, financial service center. This is, all the forms are located here. When you go all the way to the left, you see procurement services, you click on that, and, it, and the last one that says forms, you click on the little triangle and expands. This is all the forms that are related to purchasing. Some of them are not yours, like capital, request for capital, it's more Brian. But the add, change, delete, that's how to request products to be added to the database. You might go to Carlos, maybe you have a process in place here that you go to Carlos and Carlos does this, but this is the form that has to be completed. Uh, you click on it, you open the file, and you guys are familiar with print to earn, that process of sending some specific documents in Excel to Nashville? I heard of it. Okay, uh, so there. I've seen it, but I never. There's some forms, payroll forms, discrepancy, whenever somebody got paid short, eight hours, you have to fill out a discrepancy form. All procurement forms are all print to earn. So basically, it's, it's a virtual printer. It doesn't really print anywhere, it takes the specific Excel document and sends it to Nashville. So as soon as it opens, I want to show you. So as soon as it opens and you fill it out, you have to go to file, print, and that printer, that virtual printer is there as part of your printers. Yeah. All right, yeah. And if you don't have it, there. get with IT. Mm -hmm. Sign it in and uh, It's there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we all have it. You have it? Okay, have good, it. good. So this is the form that Carlos or you guys can fill out. Uh, make sure you select your property, click the drop down and scroll down and, and Coronado. Your name. You're not telecom, so basically click and select food and beverage, you know, and your email address. Because in one business day, they will add the product for you. If you need to order this product the same day, I have told Carlos, you fill out this, you will print your earn the form, and you email them and say, hey, Nessa, you know, please, I just submitted a form, I need to order this product for today. And they will add it for you instead of waiting one business day. When you scroll down, make sure that you select add to add a product. If you wanna make a change to the product or delete a product, we use the same form. When it comes to name and description, be very detailed about what exactly you want. Don't put here that you want chicken breast seven ounce. As you know, guys know, we have single loaf, double loaf, skin on, skin off, you know, airline, chicken breast. There's so many types. We gotta make sure that we put enough information there. So when we add this to Attico, and you search for a product, you're not gonna get chicken breast seven ounce and like multiple ones. You, everything is on the description, so you order specific what you want. In the past, you know, uh, before they were not doing this correctly, uh, you know, the hotel sending information, so sometimes you may see a product that are the same in Attico because right. of the pack size. Well, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so I was fixing with Jose yesterday. Um, he wanted, uh, it was a, uh, Shrimp, cook, the 91, 110, you know. So in the system, the, the word cook was not there. So they were ordering the other one and he was getting cook, but he wanted raw. So what I did is I fixed the, the cook, make sure the word cook is there, and then I created another one raw. Simple. Yeah. But you know, those are the things that if you want to order shrimp, you got to tell me 1620 raw, P&D, tell on, tell off, you know, all that information has got to be there. Okay. If you know some of this, manufacturer, recommend the vendor. If you know if it's coming from Santa Monica, go ahead and put it there. This one here is important. How do you prefer to buy this? By pound, by case, by each? 
because Nashville is going to source this product from you, it's food or another supplier, and it's going to set it up by the case. But you only want to buy maybe by pound. You right. want to be able to order five pounds at a time. So you put that there. They will set it up that way. On the right hand side, check the box if it's food, beverage, if it's beverage, and OSNE for supplies. Okay. The next thing you want to do is scroll down here and you put the outlet. You know, what outlet is going? Cakes, whatever it is. Inventory, yes. If you have a purchasing template, if you already assign a purchasing template to within Attico, you can put the template number there. Or you can, if you don't know the template number, please assign to the template for produce. Or, you know. How do you prefer to inventory this or issue out of the storeroom? Remember, we want to set you up with a case of six number 1010. You gotta tell Nashville if you want those individually out of the storeroom or inventory by can. If not, they will set up by the whole case. So when you do inventory, you have to put in 0.25 of a case or 0.50 of a case. Yeah. You don't want that. You want to be able to say one can, two can, three cans. Yeah. So here's where you put in how do you prefer to do that? Each. Each. You know. Uh, there's some things, you know, that are by case, fine. You know, but this is where you set it up. If you leave it blank, they will set up as a whole case. And then there's, there's a lot more work that has to be done. This is more for the storeroom. If the, where template is gonna be going for the storeroom, if, if the inventory, you can leave it that blank. Down here, nothing. The next thing is to print your earn. And again, it's file, print. You find the one that says earn printer. And you click print. In a matter of seconds, this gets sent to Nashville. So this is a product ad, okay? You might send an email to your buyer in Nashville and say, can you source me uh, this, you know, lamb, racks, you know, whatever, six bones. You can send an email. Once they've sourced that product, they will tell you, this is the information. Can you complete the ad form? And then you can complete the ad form. So you can do that ahead of time. You can send them an email and say, hey, I want to change my menu. Can you source all these fruits? I was just in Seattle and they, she was changing the menu to this, this spring uh, summer menu and they had a bunch of items that are locally farm and she just sent the email to Nashville with all the different items. Um, and then they got back to her, this is a product number from this company, this company, this company. So she did the product ad. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do that. Okay, so this is a product ad. The other form that you guys are gonna be using under the procurement area and it's the return authorization form. If you wanna send something back after the fact. Also at the time, Carlos will take care of this because it's food related. If you over order something after the fact. If it's something comes back on the same day and with the driver there, Carlos will send it back, short pay the invoice. But if something after, you open the box, it's wow, this, this is horrible. Yeah. Okay, return authorization form. This is, this, this is a form that is gonna be completed, bring to earn the same way. The reason we're doing this form is because Nashville will contact the vendor, arrange for a pickup, okay? And then also they're gonna send you guys, and then you guys are gonna forward it to Carlos. It's a negative purchase order, a negative PO, that when the product gets picked up, Carlos goes in and receives that negative PO so we can get credit for it. What's the turnaround time on something like that? Is it like 24 hours? Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're not gonna take it back after a day or pretty much, right? Yeah, so that's why when it's come to perishable items, you know, it has to be done quick. Because US food has a, um, a restriction on frozen items that you cannot be sent back. So the sooner products, you know, have an issue with a product, this needs to be sent back. And so most of the time, the vendor will say, seafood, you know, things like that, we have to react right away. If we don't catch it and refuse it upon delivery, then we have to do this. So never call vendors and ask them, hey, pick up the stuff, I don't like it, you know. We still have to process this form mm -hmm. in order for us to get like a negative PO credit. Okay. And then we'll get, uh, they'll arrange the pickup with the vendor so they can take the product. Again, all this information, there's drop downs here, uh, the date, delivery date, the product name, the description, the reason you want to send it back, the vendor, PO number, how many you order, how many you want to return. And then again, this is print to earn. This is a return authorization form. Okay. The R, what they call the RMA. What if I don't have a PO number? Just leave it blank. I mean, you should have a PO number because it the product came into the hotel. Yeah. Uh, you can get with Carlos. He can look it up in Attico, the PO number. You know. Most of the invoices have the PO number, 
But again, if it's after the fact tomorrow, he can get it. Carlos can get it. The other form that you guys are not going to have to do, but it's more Carlos' team, is the discrepancy form. This one right here. So this is something that Carlos does on a daily basis. Whenever there's items damaged on the same day or spoiled, you know, we're talking about produce company, West Central, that things come in bad. This is a way to communicate to Nashville that, that we have a problem with West Central. No. Whenever you come back, go back to Debbie and say, Debbie, we have an issue with West Central. Debbie goes to Docklink, that's our workflow system. Look for all the discrepancy form that Carlo has submitted. And if she sees a pattern of West Central, West Central, West Central, yes, there is an issue. You know, she had she has ammunition to go back to Avenger and say, Avenger, we have a problem here. You know, if Carlo doesn't do this, there's really there's no communication between the hotel and, and, and Nashville. And you guys doing this, right? Yeah, it also applies to stuff short, you know, on the appeal. We order five pieces of this and that, and we only got one yeah. or none. So we send this to them, and they, they follow with the vendor and see what's going on. What, what, is it coming on second round drop, or is it coming, is it back order till tomorrow? So, you know, that's, that's the way we actually communicate with them. So it happens twice a day. It's uh, like in the morning, early, like around 8.30, 9 a.m., and then they do one, another checkout on like on midday between one form that you might utilize, but it doesn't, it's not used that often, is the single source preferred vendor. This is from, we, we want to buy the, the, the bacon from US Food, but you don't like the bacon from US Food, you want to change it to something else. Uh, you can complete this form and says, I want to buy the bacon from another source, a local uh, farmer. Mm -hmm. You can do this, it gets approved, and then they can change article. Uh, sometimes it's better to send an email to Russell and I say, hey Russell, I'm having a problem with the bacon. Can we move to another supplier? Can we talk to Hormel? Can we bring samples in before submitting this one? Because this one, it goes to too many people to approve. You know, it goes to the GM, it goes to Mark Weiss, it goes to a lot of people because at the end of the day, we want to have 80% of your food purchases a vendor. Yeah. At least 85%, 90%, they keep going higher. One of these days will be 100%. But uh, there's always a, a room there because of uh, pastry items. We have to buy specialty items from local. <coughs> I think we're actually pretty good. We're of the top hotels that use a vendor. Yeah. Like a vendor, we're at 95% compliance. And what's the minimum? I think 80? 80, 85. Yeah, 86, 85. <coughs> so. so, I mean, you can see the rebates. We just got a rebate from. Uh, from a vendor for I don't know what quarter last year, so it's a lot of money coming back to the properties, you know, right. that helps, which is which is helps a lot. Besides that, we get uh, rebates from U.S. Food because of the tier. So the more we buy from U.S. Food, we get a specific tier. It's tiers from one through seven or eight. So the price on the actual invoice is already reduced. Yeah, because of the tier. Well, so that you know, with that being said, it's. That's why it's really important to, to create these kind of storeroom parts so that that U.S. food order is is Correct. big and it's on point for for you you know for my garmage my banquets and we're not sourcing from anybody else that would unnecessarily because we're ordering within those U.S. food drops we can get that whole U.S. food order on lock then it's good for everybody yes you know? I mean for the size of this hotel I can mirror this hotels so with a property like Miami Orlando Don Cesar. You know, they try to buy as much as possible from you as food, and the product are stored in the storeroom and then they requisition out. So you got a lot of meats, you know, with salamis and turkeys, and yeah. you have your bacon, your sausage. Um, I mean, even frozen food, you know, like chicken breast, frozen chicken breast, and, and, and things like that, that you can keep in the storeroom and buy from you as food. Right. And the storeroom manager is responsible, work with you and says, this is my part, maintain this. And Carlos can create order guides with the PAR and go in there and maintain it. So that's why we don't have to buy it. Right now, I was fixing something with Jose. I mentioned about the, sh the shrimp. Uh, we have the same shrimp coming from U.S. Food. The same shrimp come from Santa Monica. So right. whenever he needs it on an off day drop from U.S. Food, you have to get it from Santa Monica. Right. So that's affecting. But if we have the same shrimp, it's a frozen shrimp. Carlos should be keeping that in the store. Right. Right. You know? and, it, and then, you know, for us to say, hey, what shrimp are we going to use? What do you want to use in banquets? What are we going to yep. use in the restaurant? What are we going to use in here? All right, let's narrow it down. We got 
maybe three, two different types. It's good. It's, it's in the storeroom. Carmage can use it, market can use it, banquets can use it. Yeah, you're it's, right. I mean, there's like, usually hotels have like three different types of shrimp. Yeah. 1620 or a bulk broken shrimp for right. salads for Garmin J. Yeah. Um, but that's that's about it. A raw and a, and a cook. Okay. Three types, they keep it in the in the, in the, in the, in the storeroom, maintain it part. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's a lot of money. You buy a case of shrimp, this could be a hundred something dollars. Yeah. You know, it's a 10 pound box, you know, Twelve dollars a pound, one hundred and twenty dollars there. We can buy that from U.S. Food. That really increased the, the job size incentive. Yeah. You know. So those are the main forms are located on the procurement uh, area. You know. Okay. So going back to Attico. So we were talking about property, products. Okay. So this is where um, pretty much the, the all the products, the, the entire database is, is set up here. So if you ever want to look for a condiment and you just type in condiment, you can type, you know, if I type condiment, I don't have to type the whole word, just enough. And you can see everything that has that word come up. And then here you can say, well, I'm looking for miso. So you can put it miso here. Can I, can I throw a question out there? So I, uh, I've done that before when I, on, on products that I've gotten here, um, but then I got to find them. So I got a property products. Yep. And I type in, for instance, maybe we could try and see if it comes up, sun, sun chokes. I've ordered them twice, but then every time I'm gonna look for them, they're just not here. They're not in there anymore. There it is. Maybe, so maybe um, it got added there. It, it seems like if you source through the requisition process, it's not as detailed as other places I've noticed. Right, if you go here to requisition center, Okay, so this that's is where you're looking, right? No, I, I at one point I did exactly what you just did through the property the property products, yeah. Because sometimes when you go here and you start a new requisition, uh, and then you let's go ahead and put a delivery date and um, let's just select the store. If you hit insert product and you tap to the next field, there yeah, you can start typing lime. Yeah, put sun, yeah, put sun chips. Yeah, so you know I know that lime it doesn't come up. You see, fruit line, it doesn't come up. So basically what you have to do is right click. It gives you only the, like the 10 most used items. Like yeah, it's, yeah it's very limited when you yeah. do it this way. So you have to right click, delete, this row, then search for product, and then when you put line here, it gives yeah. you the entire database. Right. Now, one of the first things you should do, you can see that it's sourced in numeric. You don't want to do that. You should always click product description, so it's sourced alphabetic order, and then you scroll up and you go to fruit, and then you can see fruit line, 35 pounds box, so that's perfect, so you can select that. Yeah. So if you double click it, it'll go in alphabetical order. If you if, if you click on the header. On the header, yeah. The header, every yeah. header is sourced that way. Right, description. Yeah, so like if you hit search for product and you put in condiments, yes, it's gonna sort by number, you see that? And so it's gonna be all over the, the place, S, and you got M, and then you got C. So yeah. you, as soon as you click this product description one time, it's sourced in alphabetic order, so basically you get all the sauces together, the truffles together, you know. So they are here. Right, well, that's good, I didn't, I didn't know yeah. that. So yeah, good. so every yeah. single header, you basically in you can click and it's sourced that way. But part of the data cleansing that we need to do and with help Carlos is products like this. So we have two truffle juices here, two products exactly the same description, can, can, so those two are the same. All right. So part of you guys working with Carlos is data cleansing. So right now we have two, we need to eliminate one. Which one we should we eliminate? Well, whenever you have products on your requisition, you can double click on the Attica number and it will take you to the product master, similar if you will go to property product, the same way. And here you can see, this is Epicure. If you go back to your requisition and you double click on the Attica number, it opens up another tab and you can see what vendor has been assigned. And this one is assigned to Epicure. So we have basically two products of the same information in Attico. One of them has to be made inactive. Okay, and this is what Carlos will work with Nessa in Nashville. Says, hey, we need you to deactivate a product. What they do is they go here and deactivate one of the products. They make, they check this box, say yes, and then they hit save but down here at the bottom. That way the data is clean. Yeah. Whenever you see stuff like that, 
do a screenshot, uh, like for example, if, if I see something like this, print screen on your keyboard, open your email, paste it. Hey Carlos, we got two condom uh, truffle juice in Attico, can we eliminate one? Mm -hmm. So he can work with a team in Nashville um, and get rid of one. So how come one's in, in red? What does that red mean? I've seen that before. It's, you can see the vendor name here. That means that the vendor has a quote in Attico. This one doesn't have a quote. Specialty items usually don't have. This also applies to, uh, we were talking to Jose yesterday about your inventory sheets. You know, when inventory comes, like for example, banquet food, it's over 60 pages. Yeah, of like, it's yeah, ridiculous. Over 2,000 items. I'm yeah. gonna go over that as well. How so, to clean up that. So yeah. we can clean that up. You know, there's things there from previous years, menus that we no longer carry. So all those things, you can just take them up and, and you know, just purge the whole system so that we have only the stuff that we carry at this point or things that you move forward you'd like to add for. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you highlight this item and you hit uh, purchase info, it tells you the last time it was purchased, what company, 423, last purchase price, $45. So that's an option there sometimes to see. Um, if you want to know if this item has multiple bids, you can click view bids, save this. Save. And you can see that if there's two companies bidding this West Central and LA specialty, the system will pick the, the lowest price. Right. If you have a problem with one of the suppliers saying, hey, you know, LA specialty is the quality is not good, just send an email to, to Nashville so they can remove LA specialty if you don't want the quality. Always try to put it here on the description, you know, produce order, my meat order. Why? Because there's a, a menu here that you go to requisition, requisition audit. And if you click here where it says created by, and click again, you can start typing the name and hit search. And it's gonna bring you every single requisition that you have done in the past. Okay, so here's your all your requisitions. So that description that you put here will show here so if you want to know, I'll go see, back and say it's okay. It makes nice, nice seven thousand dollar application. What's that? Is <laughs> that seven thousand? Yeah. He ordered seventy four items. Total okay. seventy. Yeah. So I can double click yeah. on this. <laughs> and it was gone in a day because it just got taken by all the. Now we know the process is problem. Yeah, nice seven thousand dollar charge, James. That was the that was the four pallets. <laughs> you can double click. You can see the notes that he put here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, we need to get the, the breakfast sausage in there. Yeah. It's like that's successful just yeah. immediately. No, it's under breakfast. So, was this part of the items here? Sent to. Yeah, it's because the breakfast yeah, sausage yeah, that's in Attico is not great. Um, and Chef found a product that that is an acceptable product that's good. Uh, uh, company, so we won't just want to try to yeah. Or K&M, yeah. Yeah, just, just do the vendor, the vendor product form. You know, the ad, the ad. Excuse me. Chip, how many Ultra? Two. Just two? Yeah. Yeah, two. So right. this is all the products that he ordered. The onion bag, this there's a problem work. with this one. Perfect, thank you. 111 were ordered bags. That's why there's $1,500 here, you see? Oh, yeah. They still just sent one. They just sent one, so that's, yeah. you know, they probably check. I'm sure it's in a lot. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> 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 French onion soup. Onion soup for, soup for, for the, the drink of material for a <laughs> while. Yeah. Yeah. For the navel base. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Body puree, onion soup. <laughs> onion so you can look up your history here. And if you click on the purchase order tab on the right-hand side, it tells you all the POs that were created based on your request. There's another thing I've noticed, and I, and I haven't taken exact note of what it is, but sometimes when you order products, like I've seen mussels, for instance. Mussels are all, yeah, there's a ton when of mussels. the price is like completely off, it's like $130 a pound or something like that. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff should be by the pound, and it seems like this case pound size, it's just... It's been cleaned up since, but it, I've noticed there's sometimes when the numbers are just astronomical, and when you order your PO, it come, they fix it, but it comes up as like, like ten thousand dollars, and you only ordered a few items, and then well, that's because it's the price of the case, maybe. Sometimes that's the thing that you see that case slash uh, pound. Yeah, 
You don't ever buy that stuff by the case. Yeah, so the reason that it's like this case pound is because they sell always sell it in multiple of, let's say, 10 pounds. They pound five pound so bags, 10 pound you, bags. If you put, you want five pounds, they're not going to send you a five pound because they're not going to break the case. So that's why we have the case pound. You order one case, average of 10 pounds, you might get 10.5 or something. But the price will be a pound. So in this case, let's, let's take a look. If I go here to search for product and put muscle, and oh, the wrong place. I'm gonna select all of them to my requisition. And muscle, this is a K of 64. So they were pretty much all the by pound by pound. This is an average of 10 pound, 24. Well, see that one, what's so 68? That's, what is that for? 68 is for a case from US Food. But what is it, you know? Double click, muscle speed, I. That's a, that's a lot of money for muscles. It's a five pound bag for, so you see this yeah. one here has- Muscles don't cost pound. $16 a pound, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this, this could be wrong. This this product description could be wrong between the product description and Santa Monica. So that's one of those screenshots that you gotta send to Nashville so they can get it fixed. And then why does it say US Foods Primary? Yeah, and it says it's, US Food Primary, so, but the US Food is not even a vendor here. Yeah. So this product, again, this database has been, has been polluted. Yeah. With, 15 different chefs have come in, you know, yeah. it's not even easy. So um, we gotta get it fixed, you know? And with you guys help, every time you have something incorrect, do a print screen in article, send it to Carlos, and Carlos can communicate that to the Nashville team and says, hey, it's got food, you know, US food here. Uh, we don't think that the case, a five pound bag is $16. Um, can this be fixed? You know, right now, if we look at the product, uh, it's saying $68. Yeah. The case. Four or five pounds. So 998, let me look at this. 998, and I click view bids. Yes, I know I gotta put something there. So for the 68 view bid, see, Santa Monica is bidding $68 for a five pound bag. Our specs in Attico is a five pound bag and it's wrong. Yeah. So you can see, you, you, you know, you don't know what to order now. Are you gonna order one case and you're gonna get five pound or you're gonna get a 25 pound case? Right. You don't know, but it, it is confusing right now. And that's why you, you gotta make sure that you send this to, to uh, Nessa, Carlos, you know, exactly. those are the little things that has to be fixed. Because right now it's a five pound bag. Maybe this is a 25 pound box Yeah. for the $68. So this has to be fixed. If you order this on a, on, on a Friday or Saturday and you only get five pounds and you need it for, you know, for a function, you scrambling on, on a Saturday night, you know, trying to get this product. This is, this is a lot of, this is so many issues that we need to fix, you know, and Nashville is there to correct them. Make sure we have a clean database. Uh, this one here says 24 pound case, the muscle green lip. Yeah. So I'm gonna double click on this. This is another item. If we have this by pound, Carlos, you know, this should say wait here. Okay, so you can do screenshots and then to, to Nashville so they can fix this. No. Because every clip, you click here and it opens utilizing Excel. You don't have to like open a new email, attach the file. By doing this, it takes this, it's an attachment to your Outlook and send it to Nisa. Hey, can you create me a purchasing template for Santa Monica? And it's easier for her because she has all the adequate numbers there. Yeah, that's perfect. You know, you can do this by vendor if you like. Can you can you go right back to that process? Yep. What time was yep. So I was here under the property. Okay. Vendor. Vendor. So when you go here, you pull up the vendor. <coughs> West Central. 
and you can find uh, West Central may have two bids, LA Specialty or West Central, but um, double click on the vendor. Over here in this area, if you click on products, it tells you every single product associated with West Central. All the products. And then you just want... Uh, and then you click this export. Export. And you click export, then you go to your C drive somewhere, yeah. desktop, whatever you want to put it in. Name the file. Wes. Save. And then when you open the file right here, go to it and it's West Central. And then you can make additional notes. Please remove uh, incorrect uh, pack size, you know, Delete, he make this inactive. We don't use this, um, I don't know. Whatever products that you don't want to have here and, and you don't use anymore, you can just inactivate, inactivate, or just leave it there and just tell, create me a template. Because that's all the adequate numbers here. Oh, that's great. Now, there's a lot of products here. Um, Maybe some more seasonals, maybe you don't want them on your template, so it's up to you when you go through this and, and kind of clean them up. Yeah, I think it's better if you just go based on your menu. Yeah. Select the items that you use for Miss Trial Kitchen, for example. Yeah. Or Contina. And then just, instead of creating a whole template of all the stuff. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can keep the database full mm -hmm. because it's, it's access, right? And then do outlet by outlet broken up. And it should be a lot. And then once you got it, I mean, it stays, right? It's an insane. For us, it'll change seasonal. We'll go from morale mushrooms yeah, to something trumpets to this, onion, right? Yeah. To spring onions to a regular onion or whatever. So it, it shouldn't change a lot. Um, and you can see it's sourced in numeric. So the first thing I want to do is this. I'm going to highlight that page down to highlight everything, all the products from them. It's a lot of products. And then I go in and sort this. So custom sort. I'm gonna do it by column B. So uncheck this. Just like working in Excel. And then that way you have all the items, all the condiments that you buy. And you can say there's no reason that we get this item from um, West Central. That should be US food. You can make please make default US food. Uh, room service. Maybe they were here because in the non-US food delivery days, you had to get room service ketchup. Yeah. And West Central sells the Heinz one. Yeah, that was the case. That's probably you know, the case. Um, again, we shouldn't go into that. If we keep stuff in the storeroom and maintain it par, yeah. you know, we shouldn't be moving away from US food because that's our main supplier. And I said we have, you know, we have limitations in your storeroom, but I think there's some other areas that we can look at, you know, and I think that's, where I can assist you and if we have to look at getting you more space and stuff to support everybody else, right? We'll support you. Uh, but I think, yeah, this, this US food drop needs to be just yeah, on point, good. you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, in the storeroom there, there's a whole area with coffee. Maybe we can move that coffee to the inside where the supplies are on the, against the wall. I mean, you have to think about things that can be there are seal and there's no need. Right. Cereal, maybe you want to keep it on this side. Um, some of the condiments that maybe you don't want to be smell like soap or anything right. like that. But coffee seal in the back, so yeah. it doesn't affect. So you just gotta think about organizing the storeroom in a way that uh, it makes it. You know, I don't know if you can put more shelves in there, but. Take over the storeroom. This, this, this over, yeah, this yeah. Over, yeah. 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 No more training. Forget okay, about training. But by sorting it by column B, I'd be able to see exactly what, you know, um, all the different items you buy from them. And you can see all the different apples, you know. And then it's easier for you to make arrangement and, and, and take away and delete and all that stuff. So, uh, and then just send it to uh, Nessa. So, so by going to this property vendor, every single vendor that you pull up, you know, uh, if you go, what's another vendor that you use, Carlos? Uh, go look up k &M. <clears throat> So k and so we have here, double click. You go into the products tab, 
and this is all the different products assigned to KM. Same way, we can export this and create a template for KM. And there's no way to activate something where the chef can make a PO and go straight in. To if it's a straight direct to the vendor. Yeah, everything has to go through an expo. It has to go through. It has to go through an expo. Yeah, they're like in between, you know, like you tell them what to order and then it goes to the vendor. They're like the... Basically, the item has to be creating that goal. What Nashville is doing is turning that into a PO and transmitting it to the vendor. So if you have a specific sausage, you know, apple sausage that you want, as long as we create it to K&M, Nashville will turn it into a K&M and it's like sending a, you, you sending it to them. It's just that they are the one who's trans creating the PO and, and transmitting it to, to the supplier. It's just because like sometimes later, like cause the, my last property we had, we had Bird Street. Bird and Street I, I can yeah. do, I, I knock out POs, come straight from me, go straight to the vendor. You know, I was what, uh, yeah. LA Specialty, I was doing my produce at 11 o'clock at night and I'd get it that next morning, yeah. you know? Yeah, with um, Bird Street, you basically, you, know, you don't create requisition, you create POs. POs. And um, basically you actually transmitting it to your, your, your own buyer. Yeah. You know? Well, that was when yeah. it was before, right? Like, yeah, know. when you have purchasing managers at each hotel. So th there's a way with these templates, if we get it set up right, where we could just have the whole template show up, we can just go right down the line. Yes. One, I'm show two, you three, and then not have to deal with typing any numbers and what's Correct, over. correct. As soon as you have the templates clean and the templates built for you, um, this is what you're going to be doing. So it's the it's like the bread and seed one. Like the one, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like if you go here to requisition template center, this is where Nashville will set up the templates. If I here go to purchasing and click all templates, it will go show all the templates associated with the hotel. Can so we, sorry, go ahead. If you click on the header outlet number, it's sourced in, in number, so that way you can see what's in the storeroom, uh, Chef Paul, you know all this that were created back in the days. So this is where you can actually right click, print, and generate. It's gonna show you the template with all the items from K&M, from West Central. Now, instead of printing this, what I will recommend is we have an option here on the dropdown to export this instead of PDF, export it to what we call CSV file. It's a comma separated value, which when you do this, it takes this into Excel and it brings it like this. Now, you go like this and it says, okay, I don't need this column, I don't need this column, you can delete this. But the reason I export it to, to CSV format is I can actually do this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. You, know, you can make your own order yeah. guide sheet. Yeah. I don't need this part stock. I can go like this, right click and delete. Yeah. You know, create your own sheet for you to walk around week by week. That's hey, what I was asking about. You can this to your cooks and, okay, so do me an inventory on your produce or Tell me what you need, you know. Um, you get the numbers there and then you go to the system. What? So you have the entire order guide and this is why you can create different order guide for my meats, seafood. It depends how you want your templates. So you have it here. And then when you go to, when you go to Attico, and now what I did is I clicked drop down and select CSV. The reason I didn't do Excel, look what happened if I do it to Excel. It looks prettier, but then you because can't. there are column merch and, and hidden and all that, if you try to uh, try to copy paste and stuff like that, it, it, it doesn't really work well, uh, but you can do it, you know? And then delete this and then make this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it's up to you okay. to play around with it. No. But then you can print this and, and create your order guide. Then you go back to Attico, and this is what's on the requisition template center. Okay, and then we can also create storeroom templates to pull from Carlos. So they don't have to be guessing what item to, to, to pull. Once we create the template for Carlos, it's like this, main kitchen, daily requisition, right click, print. So you have all the items associated, you know, in this case, so just a few, but let's, let's look at, I don't know if there's anything on this one. Yeah, 
There's nothing, your old templates, no one ever used them back in 2008. But you can have a template with all the items that you pull from Carlos. So they're not guessing what shrimp Carlo keeps in there. Yeah. And then this is what you do. You go back to your requisition center. That's why you do it from template. You want to purchase from the outside. It defaults to my template, it's gonna be blank, so you should always click all templates. First thing you wanna do is click on this header and it's source number, unless you know the template number, you can go straight to it. But here you can go in and say, Chef Paul, that's my k and template, select template. And in the same sequence that you have the, the, the template, it's gonna come here. Same sequence, so all you have to do is click the drop down. I want this for tomorrow. You click here, it says, okay, this is the case, 40 pound. I just want one case, one case of 10 pound. And then you can just scroll down through what you wanted uh, through this list. And this is all your items that you always buy from KM or for whatever uh, company. And it says one case of this, one case of this, one case of this. You hit create requisition. And it turns only the items that you put amounts to, to your requisition. Mm -hmm. And in no time, you know, you sit in front of a computer, you do this, and you walk away in less than just a few minutes. You have all your items here. Now, you can still make changes. You say, oh, instead of uh, one case of 40 pounds, I wanna do two cases. You can change that. And then hit save. If it's a product that is not on your template yet, you can still go into search for a product, and then you can put in beef, and say, I wanna order the ground beef. This doesn't add it to your template, just to this order. That order, yeah. Turns it just into a straight rack. Yes, and then I want to order one case yeah. of that and hit save. And then all you have to do is then release two properties into Nashville. Very quick, very quick process. If you have to order 15, 74 items like you did that day by searching for a product or insert a product, it's time consuming. Oh yeah. Yeah, so no, that's, it's a long time. Yeah. But if you have your core of 150 items on that template of what you need, you just go through it. It, it, it allows us for room for error, because right now it's, you know, it, you, it's, it's just, and then so we're it. going and it's like you miss, so if it's like, I'm on the seafood page, I'm not gonna miss the shrimp, I'm not gonna miss the you calamari, miss, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna miss it, because I have to go through it. Oh yeah, calamari, I, I'm forced to check it, because you're there. Yeah, It's, it's you know, connection. Whereas you get a giant list and you're just like, where am I, you know? And it just, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, no, is there a way that to create like a category on a template? Let's say a template for market, but just seafood, poultry? You just create one template. One template is for, for meat, small for poultry. If you like it that way. I can tell you the other properties, they like to have their meat, seafood, and, and, and poultry kind of one in one template. Yeah. Because it's, it's not too much, you know? Um, the big protein, those, those four. Then they have the uh, frozen one, they have you know, the produce always separate, because produce you buy every day. Meats, seafood, you might not buy it every day, you buy it every two days. So it depends, it depends how you want it. It's up to you guys. Um, I can show you, um, if I go to Chicago O'Hare property, the chef loves the templates there because he was he was used to uh, Birch Street. They, they have Birch Street. Yeah, Birch Street's all templates. And then, uh, he was going straight to U.S. food. So if I go here to requisition, template center, if I click on all templates, um, I'm gonna click on the number so I can see banquet food kitchen. And you can see all his templates. Meats, gourmet, classic food, crown. So because he, he knows that he was just buying directly to a specific supply. Garrett's, Garrett's popcorn. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> Um, so you can see Supreme Lobster. I mean, yeah. So he had a vendor specific, yeah. See, that's, vendor specific that's, U.S. food, Starbucks, you know, um, and then the restaurant Fresco Twenty One is the name of the restaurant there, which now they change. But those guys, uh, they also have individual temp templates. So all you have to do is, you know, you go through here and highlight all of them by holding down the Control key, key, and then print, and generate. And then you can see for Brudel, that's the meat company. So he has his template, you know, the main categories. And then you go to the next one. 
That company is great. That's a good mean company. Yeah, that's a good I wish we could use those guys out here. Uh, you have the chicken gourmet, uh, Chicago gourmet. So you have all the items that you. It doesn't miss anything. It hit create requisition. It gives you this message. You'll always say yes. From Santa Monica or K and M or uh, West Central. Over the weekend, you're busy. You need produce to come in from Sunday to Monday early. You what you do is you create a new requisition. Okay. Here in the comment section, this is where you're gonna put in already received. It's not a really already received. It's not a part of in-house, but this is our verbiage that we, in Nashville, like a term. when we see this, we just turn this to a PO and we don't call the vendor and order it again, because you did. By doing already received dash West Central, just do it like this, okay? And then, uh, you know, special order, you know, something, but at least this is what they see and they turn it into a PO just to West Central. Do one requisition per vendor. So if you have to do this with KM, you do a separate requisition. Already received, KM. Do another requisition. Already received, Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah that's our Sunday. That's the Sunday. All right, that makes sense. Because yeah. uh, I've done them as one, or if it's like seafood and, and produce, and I'll just print preview, um, you know, put the two different purveyors. The, the contacts there, email directly to them, and then CC Carlos, and sometimes, yeah. Do it, so that's do not it. the right way to do it. That's not the right way to do it. This is the right way. You go here yeah. to West Central. Yeah, I mean, and you, don't have to, you don't have to do a- Swipe $7,000. <laughs> you don't have to do a separate requisition. I mean, you can put it all in the same one, Yeah. but as long as you specify like, okay, so seafood from Santa Monica. Yeah, uh, I can tell you that it's better to do it one, one per vendor, because this is what you can do. When you do already receive West Central, you know that all the items that you're going to put here are all West Central re related. So if you go into produce and and, and you put lettuce yeah, yeah, we, yeah. and then you put in all this to come in tomorrow after hours at 10 o'clock at night, you put one on one on one on one and you hit save, then you release it to Nashville. They know that this, that there's no guessing point. If, yeah. you, if you mix the vendors, then yeah. there's a possibility that your PO could be messed up. Do it by individual West Central, all yeah. the items. Mm -hmm. And even though you see how this one has LA specialty because the bid price is better for LA, yeah. they will turn this, Everything when they turn this to a PO, it will be West Central. Okay. And also it has happened that sometimes, for example, they order food or stuff, uh, they wanted it to get here on Monday and they send a requisition, but not make any comment. So they don't actually process the order, even though you put it in for same day delivery, they get there on Monday morning, they don't process it because they assume that we already call them. So if they don't see any comments, they don't even process the orders. So we need to make sure that we, we yeah, make yeah, those comments. Make sure you put already received West Central. Now, if 